All right, we'll, we'll get started. Here we have Suzanne and Paul. Suzanne is the CEO and founder of Wingspan Health, world's first robo-advisor for your health. Paul was the CTO and co-founder of Human Interest. He made paperless 401k for small and medium-sized businesses. And now I am going to turn it over to Suzanne and disappear. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we're Wingspan Health. We are a patient-facing platform that pulls all of your medical information into one place. So the slide I have up now is an example of where some of my healthcare data lives. Um, and Wingspan is the platform, some, some to most, Wingspan is the platform that takes all of these disparate sources of information about your personal health and your medical information and pulls it into one place and then helps you make use of that data. So we don't just grab and dump everything. We also kind of map it and structure it and present it back to you in a way that makes you feel smarter and more empowered to make good decisions about your health. Um, should we jump into questions, Paul? Sure, yeah. Um, Suzanne, it's been great working with you over the past few months. Definitely learned a lot about the healthcare market and seeing you build a lot of product. But, um, you know, after looking over your pitch and kind of thinking about it, I think there's a few questions that people might have about Wingspan. So I'm going to start with kind of a basic one. Um, you've referred to Wingspan as kind of a robo-advisor for your health, or maybe like mint.com for your health. Can you yeah. just kind of briefly talk about what that means and, and kind of the services it provides? Sure. So we think it's like way too hard to be a good patient and to feel in control of your health. And I think this is mm. the sort of thing that is true for somebody who has a chronic illness and a lot of um, kind of complex healthcare needs. But it's also true for somebody who's maybe young and healthy, but switching doctors, switching mm. insurance, maybe moving around. Um, and just nobody has a, a big picture view. And we want to be the thing that gives you that big picture view. So you feel confident that you're getting screened for the things you're supposed to get screened for on the schedule you're supposed to and be able to make smart decisions. Okay, that makes sense. And it sounds like there's a few different uh, types of customers that you might have. But overall, how big do you see this market? Like how addressable or how many addressable uh, users do you think there are out there for, for Wingspan Health? Sure. So we, we do think about it in, in sort of two separate threads. One is the, the more complex chronic illness patients, and then the other is sort of the, the general wellness warrior. Um, so that the wellness market is, is huge, um, and we see all sorts of different tools to help people feel better. Um, and we kind of want to be the, the more like healthcare industry oriented tool for something like that. Um, and then within the chronic illness market, um, about 60% of Americans have at least one chronic illness and almost 50 has at least two. So we see that as being many, many tens, if not hundreds of millions of, of potential um, people we could provide value to. Well, that makes sense. And I know there've been, you know, several billion dollar companies built just in, in the wellness market. And then mm -hmm. of course, you also mentioned a great point about chronic disease patients being very underserved and not having many good options for kind of aggregating their data. Um, so yeah, definitely a big market out there. I'm curious, how are you going to reach all these people? Um, cause they're kind of diffuse, right? They're spread all over. They have different, different kind of core needs that could be addressed with Wingspan. How, how do you think you'll be able to reach them? Sure. So si similarly to the, there being kind of two different prototypical users, there also are two different paths to reaching them. So with, within the chronic illness space, there are disease advocacy groups where, um, people with a, a given condition band together to try and encourage research to happen, to help people match with clinical trials. Um, and to just sort of talk about managing that condition. Mm -hmm. um, so partnering with those organizations or even at something as simple as finding Facebook groups that are oriented around mm -hmm. those diseases where people support each other, help figure out which doctors are good to go to, um, communities like that. Um, and then mm -hmm. there's a very active chronic illness community on Twitter that's like my favorite thing. Um, <laughs> and um, it's just very validating to know that other people have been through similar experiences that you've, yeah. that you've gone through. Um, chronic illness I think can feel pretty lonely. Um, and then, on the other path, we're really hitting this kind of like millennial um, wellness vibe and market. So mm -hmm. um, we're starting to work with some uh, like larger publications and outlets to get stories and kind of more buzz going about um, Wingspan. We're doing like an official press launch in a week and um, trying to figure out kind of how to how to how to find people in um, more more broadly and talk about the product in a way and the value of the product in a way that, that clicks. Nice. 
You know, one thing that always uh, impressed me about Wingspan, Suzanne, is just the diversity of channels through which you could acquire customers, mm -hmm. both through, through PR or potentially down the line partnerships, but also surprisingly for a health app, there's some potential for, I don't know if virality is the right word, but yeah. people onboarding, you know, family members in their own life as they fill out kind of questionnaires about their family members' conditions. And I think this is a really great uh, opportunity for you to both grow within your users' networks, as well as grow through PR and, and mass adoption. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely a lot of ways to, to attract users for a product like this. Yeah, one of the things, one of the cool features we had talked about um, that's launching soon is uh, collecting family history. So one of the mm -hmm. kind of standard questions you get asked when you go to the doctor is about your family history of certain diseases. And that's a hard thing to keep track of. It's not your personal mm -hmm. health. I think people often, like I, I know I misremembered my grandfather's abdominal aortic aneurysm as sort of generic heart disease. And those are very different things and mean different things to a doctor. Um, so we're hoping to build a tool that lets you not just sort of record that all, but also reach out directly to family members so they can tell you um, the relevant information that you need and then you can have it on your phone the next time you go to the doctor. That's awesome. Um, I do think though, key for you making that, that vision a reality is just being able to integrate with everyone's you know, healthcare provider, right? Mm -hmm. Because if I use you know, one or two kind of healthcare providers you have a deep integration with, and then I onboard a sister or a parent or a child and they don't use that same doctor, maybe they're in another state, that really hampers the growth of your system. So, so how are integrations going? I mean, I think you mentioned having over 300 integrations with health systems. Um, yeah, what so kind of coverage do we have there? Yeah, okay. so in the first six months, we hit 300 integrations with health systems, which is about as far as Apple Health got in about six years. Um, and since then, since uh, joining this program, uh, we've hit 750. So oh, wow. we're integrated with well over half of the care that's provided in the United States, we can already pull onto the platform and that is scaling rapidly. So that, that's amazing. I mean, that a, a small startup like this can actually run ahead of, of Apple Health in terms of technical integrations without, you know, the kind of cloud of Apple or the resources, right, to either gain partnerships or implement them. What's, what's your unfair advantage? Why are you able to move so quickly in building these integrations? Yeah, so uh, Apple is kind of hinged, like attached to their cart and horse. There's some cart horse analogy in there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> to uh, to a, a, a new progressive standard of data integration, which is great mm -hmm. and it is coming. But um, having worked in healthcare for my whole career, I was a little more skeptical of how quickly that new integration standard would get adopted and um, like really be available everywhere, everywhere. So. Mm. In some ways, we're kind of taking a step backwards to step forwards. Uh, we're using an older integration standard that still works and is um, much more easily accessible. And then um, pull, pulling and moving to the new one as it becomes more and more available. But that I, lets us I think, kind of like first to market and first to user feedback on the data. You know, there's a phrase in software engineering that's a, that goes something like worse is better. And I think that's a really good example of that. You know, there are many fintech startups that try to kind of wrap up banks and their APIs and data feeds, but really the, the one to run ahead of them was Plaid, who were able to just kind of, by hook or by crook, extract data, even yeah. highly sensitive and highly important financial data. And in a way, I, I kind of see Wingspan as kind of building Plaid for healthcare, in addition to building a, a killer product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that by hook or by crook is, is key. We think that yeah. a product like this is only valuable if it can get all of your data. And so we are very committed to getting all of your data, kind of how, however, whatever hoops we need to jump through to do that for you. Um, and then we also take direct feedback. So if we don't integrate with a system that you have, that you've gone to, um, you can fill out a form and let us know. And we, I actually just spun one up today. So somebody wow. requested it two days ago and we spun up a, an integration for them today. That, that's really fast. Um, let's switch gears really quickly just to, just to money and revenue. So, so how does Wingspan make money? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the, the, the piece we haven't touched on yet is the sort of my personal health journey and the, the, the very quick version of it is that I, I have a chronic illness, it took me a long time to get diagnosed, and it was pulling all my medical information together and making sense of it that got me there. So Wingspan mm -hmm. is very, as a kind of user facing product, is really um, adjacent to that. But then because I have a rare disease, it's really hard for research to happen about an, a condition like mine. There aren't enough of us in a similar location seeing the same kinds of doctors for someone to be able to see patterns or design a trial or recruit us to a trial even. Um, and so I I think the the really exciting big vision of Wingspan is not just that we help people manage their own care, but that by building this large longitudinal data asset, we also help improve the quality of care overall. And it's that you big advanced yeah. science. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and it's that big data asset and and the science and kind of money funding that science and research that we're hoping will we're not hoping we we know is a very large market and that I have yeah. some experience selling into 
um, and where we, we want to bring those fans. What do you see as the potential revenue opportunity there? You know, at, at, at kind of, you know, at, as, as you approach kind of getting more and more people's health data. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a huge market that is growing super rapidly. Um, even yeah. just sort of within like uh, medications and med device development, um, we're talking about <clears throat> like a one and a half billion mark dollar market right now. Um, and that is sort of just one slice of where this data of, of who would find use from this data. Wow, that's that's a huge opportunity. And I know you've you know from your background have built things that are that are compliant with HIPAA and other healthcare standards. So you're able to kind of aggregate this data in a way that's anonymous and protects the, the patient's uh, privacy, absolutely. right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, it was great talking to you today, Suzanne, and hearing about, you know, your latest thinking about Wingspan and how far it's come. Um, looking forward to seeing the company grow in advance. I mean, there's so much potential here. Thanks so much, Paul. I appreciate your time. It's fun to see you again. Likewise.